Through Christ, let us offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Open our lips, O Lord. And we shall declare your praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Friends in Christ, we come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of his church. We lift up our hearts in thanks and praise, hear from God's holy word and pray for this world and for ourselves. Over the month of September, we join with our diocese and with churches around the world in marking the season of creation. The season of creation has become a period in the annual church calendar dedicated to God as creator and sustainer of all life. This year, the theme of the season of creation is Ecos, a home for all. Ecos is an ancient Greek word meaning house or home. So during this season, we will explore the scriptures and the message to us as to how we might live together in our common home, this planet. We give thanks to God for the gift of creation of which we are a part and pray that we may live in harmony with the intricacies of the world around us. We pray for all God's creatures and ask that we may better care for them and the whole web of life. May our actions reflect a love for God's world and justice for those affected by cruelty, greed and pollution. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins, seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. God of all mercy, we humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered from your way. We have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us, have mercy on us, wipe out our sins, and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of your Spirit, that we may live the new life to your glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen. God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous. He is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Grace and peace be with you. And also with you. The first reading is from the letter of St. James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters. For you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, Yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. 
With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grape, grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Here ends the first lesson. Te Dei Chet, Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be paid, you that answer prayer. To you shall all flesh come to confess their sins. When our misdeeds prevail against us, you will purge them away. Blessed are those whom you choose and take to yourself to dwell within your courts. We shall be filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You will answer us in your righteousness with terrible deeds, O God, our Saviour. You that are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the distant seas. Who by your strength made fast the mountains. You that are girded with power. Who stilled the raging of the seas, the roaring of the waves. And the tumult of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth are afraid at your wonders. The dawn and the evening sing your praises. You tend the earth and water it. You make it rich and fertile. The river of God is full of water. And so providing for the earth, you provide grain for us all. You drench its furrows, you level the ridges between. You soften it with showers and bless its early growth. You crown the year with your goodness. And the tracks where you have passed drip with fatness. The pastures of the wilderness run over. And the hills are girded with joy. The meadows are clothed with sheep. And the valleys stand so thick with corn, they shout for joy and sing. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from the Gospel according to St Mark. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Here ends the second lesson. Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David, through the holy prophets God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, 
from the hands of all who hate us. To show mercy to our forebears. And to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham. To set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear. Holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation. By the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. And to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not many of you should become teachers, brothers and sisters, says St. James in his letter. For you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Words I wish I had spent more time thinking about when I was in college. But they are words not just for priests, but for all of us. And fundamentally, they come down as words of warning about what we say, and perhaps how we say it. How we pass on that which we have learnt and experienced. They should cause us all to pause. And also, perhaps, to think about how we have learnt and who we have learnt from. In their context, this passage is about the risks imposed by self-appointed teachers and the dangers of those who are not qualified to teach and whose indiscipline and self-interest is able to cause communal damage, spiritual damage. The tongue is a metaphor for speaking, for speech. The tongue operates much like a bridle for a horse or a rudder for a ship, a small mechanism that directs where you go, small but very influential. Negatively, it can be destructive, very destructive. It can be like a spark that lights a bushfire. But for the person carrying the image of God, it shouldn't be like that. A Christian cannot carry this duality any more than fresh and salt water can emerge from the same spring or figs can emerge from olive trees and vice versa. As such, self-control over how we speak and what we say is a sign of real Christian maturity for James. Ultimately, the passage is a poignant observation and comment on human willfulness, which manifests both good and bad things through what they say. Our tongues can do great good, but they can also do great harm. This passage is such an important one and so very relevant to much of what is going on around us. Many of us have seen how dangerous it is if people pass on fake news or incorrect facts, no matter how well-intended they might be. This is particularly significant for Christians at the moment because there is a definite anti-science sentiment around stemming from a minority which we are all getting painted with. We see this anti-science sentiment in comments made online and in print media that breed climate change denialism, as well as making people reticent to get vaccinated. However, as much as there is a definite warning in this passage, there is also the capacity, I think, to also see that we can also choose to speak truth and do good, just as there also remains the potential to do harm and spread falsehood. 
We see this again and again in the life of St. Peter. Peter, who one minute seems to be getting it all right, and then the next minute seems to be way off track. Yet it is this same Peter, through all his mishaps, who is transformed as Christ's disciple. And we later hear is courageously proclaiming the gospel and a great leader in the early church. Yes, we can get things wrong, but we can also change. We can come to the right. We can do the right thing, even if we've been wrong-headed and stuffed up big time, even if we have verbally committed ourselves in public to doing the wrong thing, we can change. It comes through humility. It comes through putting our egos aside. It comes through a willingness to learn and to do what is right. Christ invites us to change. Christ invites us to follow him. But recognising we might need to change may be the first step we have to take. The great spiritual writer of the 17th century, Thomas A. Kempis, once said that the hardest struggle is the struggle to overcome ourselves. How do we discard that tight-fitting cultural mantle of consumerism and the myths around wealth, domination and productivity that have driven our societies to the brink of existential collapse. The evidence is out there to see, and yet for so many it seems so convenient to ignore. We are all called as Christ's disciples to put our faith in Christ into action. The call we hear in the Gospels is to take up the cross. This is no polite euphemism. It is about following Christ no matter where that leads, even if that leads to rejection, humiliation and death. It's not enough to think. We have to do. Again and again in his letter, James insists that faith that is not put into action is worthless. Faith without works is dead. And yes, perhaps we need to consider the content of our faith if that faith leads us to inaction, just as we might have to consider what actions are consistent with our Christian discipleship. As we continue to move through this season of creation in the context of our planetary crises, we do need to hear God's word in the cry of the poor and the cry of the earth. We must use our well-trained tongues to speak out the prophetic word we have received. So then the question following us may be, how might we, each and every one of us, take up the opportunities God provides to each to forward the healing and saving of the earth and all its communities? Over the past week, for the first time, Archbishop Justin Welby of Canterbury, along with Pope Francis of Rome and Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch of the Eastern Orthodox Churches, have published a joint declaration calling for all Christians everywhere, for humanity everywhere, to be stewards of God's earth and care for all creation. They have warned of the urgency of environmental sustainability, its impact on poverty, and the importance of global cooperation. The three Christian leaders spoke against injustice and equality, saying, and I quote, 
we stand before a harsh justice, biodiversity loss, environmental degradation, and climate change are the inevitable consequences of our actions, since we have greedily consumed more of the Earth's resources than the planet can endure. But we also face a profound injustice. The people bearing the most catastrophic consequences of these abuses are the poorest on the planet and have been the least responsible for causing them. End quote. We must not allow ourselves to be paralysed by fear, but rather roused into action. Roused into action, inspired into action. For when we act, we know, or we should know, that we do and can make a difference. For all those looking for a bit of good news at the moment, consider the, the following from just the past year or so. Last year in August, the World Health Organization announced that the whole of the continent of Africa has seen the eradication of wild polio because we do not need to live with disease. The first trials of a vaccine for HIV are looking promising, with 97% of volunteers reacting positively. More and more companies, businesses, industries and households are making the change to renewable energy sources and lowering, lowering waste. For all their pain, lockdowns throughout the world have led to better air quality in cities throughout the world. New Zealand has raised the minimum living wage in an effort to support the most vulnerable in society. Saudi Arabia and Pakistan banned child marriage and Kazakhstan abolished the death penalty. There has been an increase in the birth rate and population of elephants and lions in Kenya and gorillas in Uganda. It has been revealed that not one single rhino in Kenya was killed by poachers during 2020, something that hadn't been achieved since 1999. Just this past week, platypus have been released into the waterways of the Royal National Park in Sydney after not being seen there since the 1970s. And on top of all of that, we have seen the fastest delivered vaccine ever for the coronavirus, as we saw governments and researchers around the world acting together, working together. How did this happen? Because people chose to act. People chose to care. People chose to do something. There is good news and there can be good news. So many actions that we can make ourselves can lead to a better today and a better tomorrow. Cutting down air pollution will improve health for everyone. Saving energy saves you money. Eating less meat and more fruit and vegetables is good for us. Buying fair trade products means a better deal for farmers internationally. Real wages for those who make those products. Just as buying local organic produce is good for our farmers at home. Large or small, our actions can come with big practical paybacks. We can choose to come to the right, to do the right thing. Or we can choose to do harm, whether we know or see that harm or not. As Christians, we are not doing this out of some attempt to build a utopia on earth 
But we do this because we are Christians. We are living God's way now. The way of the kingdom now. Living the life that God calls us to now. The God who is the creator and sustainer of all life. The God who created us and all creatures. The God who redeems us and empowers us to live as disciples of Christ, transforming us in the present as we move into God's future. All of creation bears the imprint of its creator and is God's gift to everyone. And we have a responsibility towards each other to protect it. We cannot think of ourselves as isolated from others or from creation. For years now, decades now, Anglicans have recognised what are known as five marks of mission, as what it means to live out our vocation as Christian disciples. The fifth of those marks is to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. Pope Francis, in 2017, put it like this, Living our vocation to be protectors of God's handiwork is essential to a life of virtue. It is not an optional or secondary aspect of our Christian experience. End quote. Last year, about the time of the outbreak of this current pandemic, our parish here at St Martin's undertook a book study for Lent, Ruth Valerio's Saying Yes to Life. I'd like to conclude with some words from the introduction of that book. Ruth writes, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Millions of Christians state this belief around the world every Sunday. It is foundational to our faith. For too long, the theology and the practice of caring for people and planet have been sidelined in the Christian faith. It is high time to bring them into the centre and root them strongly in our churches and Christian lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us affirm the faith of the Church. I believe in God, the The Father Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us join together in the prayer which Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be exalted, Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory cover the earth. Keep our nation under your care. And guide us in justice and truth. Let your way be known on earth. Your saving power among all nations. Send out your light and your truth. That we may tell of your saving works. Have mercy on the poor and the oppressed. Hear the cry of those in need. Hear our prayers, O Lord. For we put our trust in you. Jesus, Redeemer of our common home and provider for all creation, teach us to value the habitats of all, your creatures given into our care, so that we can preserve the world in all of its diversity. Inspire us to value your precious gifts and never to take more than we can give and sustain. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, Holy Trinity, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let your requests be made known unto God. In everything give thanks. Loving Father, you are the source and giver of life and lover of all you have made, creator of earth sea and sky. Kindle the fire of your spirit within us, that we may be bold to heal and defend the earth, and pour your blessing upon all who work for the good of the planet. We thank you for the wondrous diversity of your creatures, and we pray for their well-being. Receive our thanks, we pray, for the beauty of our local area, and all who dwell in it, and grant us the wisdom and will to conserve it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, who through your Son has given us his church as a community of faith, hope, and love, to carry out your work and make disciples of all nations, Give her the desire and the strength to do what pleases you in building your kingdom here on earth. We join with Archbishop Justin of Canterbury, Pope Francis in Rome, the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople, and Christians throughout the world in praying for the upcoming summit in Glasgow and all who will attend. We pray that they and governments throughout the world will make wise decisions for the life of the planet and remember the poor who are most affected by global neglect and extreme weather. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, heal we pray and redeem the wounds of your creation and visit the places and peoples who suffer from our indifference, neglect and greed. Sustain, we pray, the people of this community who desire or need your presence particularly and help. We pray particularly for all those known to us who are ill or grieving at this time. We pray for all those who have contracted the coronavirus throughout the world, all who care for them, and for all who respond to the pandemic throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you are the true rock and refuge of all your creatures. Receive into everlasting mercy all those who have died. In union with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Martin and all your saints, we pray for all those who have died recently and all whose years remembrance falls upon this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. 
with all your saints, we pray that you would bring us to a joyful resurrection and into your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have given us grace to agree in these our prayers, and you have promised that when two or three gather in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and prayers as may be best for us. Grant us in this life knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life eternal. Amen. We join in saying together, Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We conclude this time of prayer together with the words of the grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.